Hello and welcome to Freewave TV. I'm Paige Friedman, bringing you the latest in maritime news from around the world. Today in maritime news, United Nations comes up with goal for exporting Ukrainian grain. A German container company launches its own shipping line. FMC says congestion at East Coast ports is from lack of accountability. Truck drivers protest wait times at Port of Baltimore. Drury publishes latest global container terminal operators annual review and forecast report. Mayor's supply service given more work with Shell Brazil. Another major cruise line will welcome unvaccinated guests aboard. With Ukraine exporting grain again, the United Nations is looking to ship more grain out of the country. Yesterday, the organization set up a goal to move around 2 million to 5 million tons a month out of Ukraine. The UN said that many ship owners have been showing interest in shipping the grain, and it anticipates that there will be a rise in applications. The increase in interest is a positive for Ukraine, as it looks to export more than 20 million tons of last year's grain harvest in order to make room for this year's. As more companies are establishing their own shipping lines, like Lidl and All Seas Global Logistics, a German container leasing company has also followed suit. Lotus Containers announced it has formed its own shipping company called Carrier 53. The new shipping line will launch service this month and focus primarily on Pacific routes between China and the U.S. West Coast. Some companies have been forming their own shipping lines as a result of the issues to the global supply chain. In the United States, East Coast ports have been plagued with an excess of empty containers. The chairman of the U.S. Federal Maritime Commission, Daniel Maffei, visited the port of New York and New Jersey, and following his visit, FMC Commissioner Carl Benzel released a statement saying carriers should not receive involuntarily subsidized storage for empty containers that belong to them unless they are appropriately compensated. The chairman agreed with the statement, and he added that he believes the reason for the congestion is due to a lack of accountability in moving the empty containers back into terminals. He also said that the industry needs to work together to plan how to better respond to the current challenges of returning empties to the port. Meanwhile, at the port of Baltimore, yesterday a group of truck drivers were protesting about long wait times at the container terminal. The drivers complained about how they have been waiting longer to pick up containers and that Ports America Chesapeake and the Maryland Port Administration don't care about the issue. According to the truck drivers, the terminal operator works to offload container ships as quickly as possible, but is in no rush to move containers once they are in the yard. The drivers are expected to be on site today as well. The latest global terminal rankings have been released and one shipping company has climbed its way up the leaderboard. APM Terminals has moved up from fourth place to second place in the new rankings, putting it ahead of China Merchants and Costco. Singapore's PSA International remains at the top of the list. APM Terminals reported the largest absolute increase in equity-adjusted volumes in 2021, with volumes up 10.3% or 4.7 million 20-foot equivalent units to 50.4 million 20-foot equivalent units for the year, which is about 13 million 20-foot equivalent units behind PSA. Drury's report claims that the widespread container shipping trade recovery following the COVID pandemic has enhanced the global terminal capacity outlook. Drury also said global container port capacity is anticipated to increase by an average annual rate of 2.4% to reach 1.38 billion 20-foot equivalent units by 2026. In other news, Maersk Supply Service was given a contract on behalf of Shell Brazil for work on the floating production storage and offloading vessel Fluminense, which is just off the coast of Rio de Janeiro. Under the contract, MSS will do remediation work on two of the FPSO's mooring lines, and MSS said that onshore engineering has already started, and offshore operations are set to begin later in the month. This new contract is presumed to consolidate MSS's position in the Brazilian market. 
Following the announcement of Norwegian Cruise Line lifting the vaccine requirement earlier in the week, another major cruise line will also be allowing unvaccinated guests to sail. Royal Caribbean announced that starting on September 5th, it will no longer be requiring vaccines for passengers on certain sailings. Cruises out of Los Angeles, Galveston, New Orleans, and from a European home port will be able to welcome everyone on board regardless of their vaccination status. However, some destinations on those itineraries may not allow unvaccinated guests to get off the ship. The cruise line said it is working to lift the vaccine requirement on other sailings, but that it needs to coordinate with other countries before it can do so. And now here's the news making headlines around the world. Images released on Thursday by independent satellite firm Planet Labs illustrated three near-identical craters where buildings at Russia's Saki Air Base had been struck with precision. These images suggest that Kyiv may have obtained a new long-range strike capability with the potential to redirect the course of the war. After China's ambassador to the UK was summoned by Foreign Secretary Liz Truss over wide-ranging escalation against Taiwan, a document released on Wednesday indicated that China had withdrawn its promise not to send troops or administrators to Taiwan if it takes control of the island, acting as a signal that China's President Xi is giving less freedom than was previously promised. Similar to the plan used to retake control of the former British colony of Hong Kong in 1997, China's Communist Party has advocated that Taiwan may return to its sovereignty under the terms of one nation, two systems. Taiwan responded to the ruling party's request with a downright refusal on Thursday. The South ruled Island's foreign ministry rejected the one country, two systems model proposed by Beijing in its white paper published earlier in the week. Ministry spokesperson Joanne O oh told the media only Taiwan's people can decide its future, before adding that China used Nancy Pelosi's visit as an excuse to create a new normality to intimidate Taiwan's people. As tensions intensify between Taiwan and China, South Korea is also clashing with China. After an allegedly smooth first visit to China by South Korea's foreign minister this week, the disagreement emerged from the installation of the terminal high altitude area defense system that South Korea was installing. The U.S. missile defense shield threatens past efforts made by the new Seoul government to tackle long-standing security issues. China claims the system allows the South to infringe on its airspace and began curbing commercial and cultural imports when it learned of the system's installation in 2017. After KCNA reported that Kim Jong-un declared a shining victory over the coronavirus and praised the indomitable tenacity of North Koreans, his sister gave a speech that left many with questions. When Kim Yo-jong wasn't blaming South Korea for its outbreak, she spoke of her brother, the leader of North Korea, having suffered from fever amid the nation's peak. She warned that North Korea was considering a strong retaliatory response and added that the illness is a crime against humanity, as Kim hailed the miracle of allocating a mere 74 virus deaths, celebrating the end of the pandemic. As confusion ramps up in North Korea, temperatures continue to rise in England and Wales on Thursday as the extreme heat warning gets put to action. The amber warning is expected to last through Sunday after predicting temperatures could rise up to 35 degrees Celsius. This heat wave is leading many to fear the potential of wildfires while adding pressure on transportation services and water supply. While England fears wildfires, France is dealing with them. On Thursday, firefighters flew from across Europe to battle what is being described as a monster wildfire that has been burning for three days near the wine-growing heartland of Bordeaux. The blaze forced thousands of people from their homes and scorched 6,800 hectares of forest while over 1,000 firefighters backed by water bombing aircraft battled against its destruction. Firefighters said they had managed to save the village of ben and as some in nearby hostens have their bags packed in case they need to flee. As France deals with wildfires, it seems as though the American state of California is seeing something for the first time. On Wednesday, the mix of unusually hot temperatures and warm wind 
led to the development of what scientists call a fire NATO. Hundreds of firefighters were called to control the anomaly that spread from a bushfire. Los Angeles officials claim that no buildings are in danger and added that nobody had been injured. In other news, satellite analysis of Antarctica on Wednesday showed that the continent's coastal glaciers are releasing icebergs quicker than nature can restore the melting ice, more than doubling prior estimates of the ice sheet's losses over the past 25 years. The study raises new concerns about how rapidly climate change is weakening Antarctica's floating ice shelves and accelerating the rise of global sea levels. Meanwhile, in the United States, the average price of U.S. retail gasoline fell below $4 per gallon on Thursday for the first time in months. According to the American Automobile Association, the national average price for regular unleaded gas fell to $3.99 a gallon on August 11th, hoping it drops more during September. Gasoline futures are down 27.3% from June highs, while U.S. crude oil has fallen 25%. Inflation expectations are also falling, as they remained flat in July. However, consumer inflation is still up 8.5% from a year ago, affecting American spending habits. There have been more than 1,200 deaths by suicide among current and former Australian Defense Force members since 2001. After a landmark report, the high rate of suicide by current and former Australian Defense Force members has been described as a national tragedy. After interviewing hundreds of people over eight months, it was discovered that after being released, military members struggle with authority and a lack of support. The government has apologized and pledged to respond urgently to the report's recommendations. Over in Africa, two days after Kenya's general election, Citizens are still unsure about who will be stepping into office, leading many to question the sanctity of the votes. Election head Wafula Chebukati urged people to remain patient and not to panic. And he added that media houses are releasing different tallies. Right now, the media's tallies show that the two leading candidates, Rayla Odinga and William Ruto, are neck and neck. A woman in Brazil has been detained on suspicion of using a psychic to defraud her mother of more than $150 million in artwork, money, and jewelry. The alleged victim is reportedly the widow of one of Brazil's foremost art collectors, and she has claimed to have been mistreated by her daughter and her accomplices, including locking her inside her home for months. Police say seven people are suspected of involvement in the years-long crime and face charges of embezzlement, robbery, extortion, false imprisonment, and criminal association. We're now going to take over Jean-Louis, who's going to share what's going on in the sports world. It's Thursday. You know what that means. Of course, course Jean-Louis is always a free wave, and by stateside to across the pond, he let's give you the sports stories of today. We kick it off with tennis. As in wake of Serena Williams' retirement announcement, the legend lost her round of 32 matchup against Swiss star Belinda Benchy. Tearful, the American star took the loss in stride, getting crowd support up until her last appearance on the field. Williams reflected as this will likely be her last Canadian Open, thanking fans and saying goodbye to Toronto. Williams announced her next move in a Vogue magazine earlier on this week, citing her exit from tennis as an evolution rather than her retirement. As emotions run high off the field, we still have some drama on it. As number one seeded Daniil Medev was taken out by Australian star Nick Karagos. Karagos advances to the Sweet 16, where he'll face fellow countryman Alex Deminer at 3 today. Now on the women's end, we also have the round of 16 taking place, starting off with Coco Golf taking on Arya Sabalenka at 11. We switch gears here to football, where a loaded slate is spanning many different leagues as qualifiers are still taking place. The Europa League has plenty of games today, including Zurich versus Linfield at 6. The night ends off with Sloven Bratislavia taking on Olympiakos at 7.30, as well as Partizan Belgrade taking on A.K.E. Larensena at 8. 
The Conference League had one game on tap yesterday, with Victoria Guerrero-Marez taking out Hadouk split 1-0. Today, however, sees a host of matchups, including Aries versus Makai Tel Aviv, as well as Sligo Rovers taking on Viking FK, each taking place at 7. The day ends with multiple games, including AZ Akamar taking on Dundee United at 8. In the Premier League, transfer season is still alive and well, as while Chelsea's men's roster is in rebuild mode, the women's look to look for winners. Chelsea defender Millie Bright signs on a contract extension with the team, as the contract extension length lasts three years. Of course, Bright has helped Chelsea win 12 major trophies, including the WSL six times, the FA Cup on four occasions, and two Continental Cups. She had also played in six games of the Lionesses Euro 2022 tourney, including the win over Germany this past month. As we started, we returned back to some retirement news, as British Olympic star Eve Maria Head retires from the sport of curling. The 32-year-old has had many accolades through her 16-year career, both junior and senior divisions. Maria Head is best known for leading Great Britain to gold at the 2022 Winter Olympics in Beijing. She is also the youngest skip to win an Olympic medal as her team claimed bronze back in 2014. Ex-cricket star Ross Taylor is in the news today. As in recent retiree's book, Black and White, the Samoan stated that he had experienced instances of racism on his time with the New Zealand team. Taylor mentioned the dressing room banter, including derogatory comments about fellow teammates of ethnicities that were often passed off. This revisits numerous instances of racism in English and Scottish cricket, many in which were reprised in the now-famed Azim Rafiq case, where he himself endured comments within his club. The Black Caps captain retired back in 2014. Browns quarterback Deshaun Watson is expected to start in the team's preseason opener. The 26-year-old is currently under fire over a dozen sexual allegations that had taken place during his time with the Houston Texans. Now, as it stands, the league is appealing his current six-game suspension in the hopes of a longer ban. Ditto for Dodger pitcher Trevor Bauer, who in wake of the MLB season, which includes the rise of the mighty Mets, the drought of the Yankees, and Otani reaching Babe Ruth territory in the 10-win, 10-home run club, we too have a sexual assault case linked to the now major leagues. Bauer had filed for a lawsuit for his sexual battery accusation back in April, as it was alleged that Bauer beat and sexually abused a lady last year. The woman in question sought out and were later denied a restraining order against him, ultimately countersuing in full effect for the 31-year-old, coming in an untimely manner as the Dodgers are in the driver's seat, being the best team in the league heading into playoff season. In the American League, the Detroit Tigers fired general manager Al Alvila. Alvila had spent 20 years in Detroit, including the last seven in the GM role. In his time as GM, the Tigers had five losing seasons, including two years with the worst record in baseball, with a 100-loss season to boot. They currently are on pace for more at the time of recording, as this season they're 43-69, and 69, the third worst overall in the league. And lastly, we head to rugby, where we acknowledge Australian Rugby League coach and former player Paul Green, as Green has passed away at the age of 49. As a player, he made 162 appearances across five different clubs during his 10-year career. As coach, his impact was felt even more, guiding North Queensland Cowboys to their first national rugby premiership title back in 2015. He'll be missed by many pundits of the cricket community. That's all I got for you guys today. Stay locked and loaded, of course, to Freewave TV and all of our socials for live updates, insight, and more. But till then, I'm Jean-Louis. There's your news.
is all we have for today. For more detailed news, you can visit our website, www.freewavetv.com. On behalf of all of us here at Freewave TV, thanks for watching, and we'll see you our next newscast. Thank you.